All right, so you listen up. Now, I believe that there is at least one, if not all four Figma hacks in this video that you did not even know existed, and they're actually pretty useful. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Let's go. So the very first one, now, I have been working endlessly on a brand new course for practical user research and strategy. Now, in this course, I have built a lot of custom templates and one of them was a competitor analysis template. So here you can see we have a bit of a widget and we have some data and the goal of this little task was to just populate some of the data. But I also wanted to include in my presentation or in my template, some links to external websites that my students could click off onto. Now, in Figma, the only things or the only element that you can actually link is a text link. So I could go ahead, link this up to Google, all right? But this looks pretty clunky. I don't like the idea that we have to repeat the word visit so many times. So a better way might be to go ahead and you utilize an icon, right? So if we had an icon, we could actually go ahead and remove all the visits, right? delete them all and it will just look a lot nicer and it just feels a lot cleaner. So if we double click onto our icons, we can't actually link it up at the top because Figma doesn't allow us to. So what is the workaround? Well, the first workaround or the first Figma hack that I believe you didn't even know existed would be to actually utilize text to wrap around this icon so we can actually fake it until we make it. All right. so. Let's say we have an icon inside a group. I'm gonna hit Command Option G to wrap it inside a frame, right? So we've got a frame in here now. And then I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard. I'm gonna click right into that frame and I might just use the words, uh, the letters G-O, just for go. Just something short, snappy and sweet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag the go text layer, right? Outside of the group. So I'm just gonna click it outside the group. Then I will move the go underneath the group. Okay, so it's underneath the icon now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna position it uh, horizontally in the center and vertically in the center. Change the fill to whatever color the background of this element is going to be. So the go actually sits behind the icon now. Go click on go, link, and I can type in google.com. Now, if I go ahead and hover on this icon, you can see that there is a link and if I click it, it will actually open up google.com. So that is the very first Figma hack that you probably didn't even realize existed, but it's pretty damn useful. Whoa, 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 so before we continue, I did forget to mention, if you do want to master Figma and go from zero to hero, be able to manage an entire project from start to finish, design systems, style guides, auto layout, responsive design, and so much more, you can join over 4,500 students of mine and take on my Figma Masterclass course, where we will cover everything and get you from zero to hero, noob to pro, all within 10 hours. So make sure to check the link in the description. And with that said, back to the video. Now over onto the second one. So here we have a tooltip, and obviously everyone knows how to design a tooltip. Here we have a quick auto layout, um, component. We have some text inside, so it would always grow. However, if we want to position this tip to the bottom of the tool tip, we can go ahead and absolute position it. We can move it down to the bottom and we'll be thinking, well, isn't that pretty easy, Ms. Co? But this doesn't actually solve the trick because if I go ahead and type more text, right, it does work. But what happens if I push the text onto the third line? it doesn't work and it absolutely breaks. So one thing that we can do is, let me just quickly move this over to the side. What if we can go ahead and hack it once again? As you can see, this one will grow and it will never break no matter how much text you put into the tooltip. So let's go ahead and recreate this. So let me just go ahead and just uh, change this up and let's go ahead and push position this down to the bottom. What we are actually going to do is we're going to go ahead and wrap this tip inside an auto layout component. Okay, so I'm going to hit Shift A, and this will wrap the tool tip or the, sorry the tip inside an auto layout component. I'm then going to drag this all the way to the end of the tool tip, right? So this will allow it to extend. Then I'm going to change the uh, vertical constraints to fixed height. 
I'm gonna change this height to one pixel. So you can see that it's only gonna be one pixel. Then you will notice that there is a gap between the frame and the actual tip. So what we can do is we can remove all the spacing. So remove all the spacing on the left and right, top and bottom of the frame, or, or sorry, the auto layout. And you will see that even though that, let me zoom all the way in, even though we remove all the space, there is still a gap because this triangle is actually created as a square. So we can either go ahead and wrap this inside another frame. So command option G, and then we can go ahead and drag this frame all the way down and we can make sure we clip the content so it always sits right against the auto layout frame that it's wrapped in. So I might just go ahead and rename this to wrapper. Now, all I need to do is go ahead and position this down to the bottom. So if I go ahead and to the top and align it to the bottom of this tool tip, and I can obviously, if I wanna move the tip over to the right hand side, I can go ahead and add some right padding. There we go. Now, if I go ahead and type, it will always stick to the bottom. So the real trick here is to wrap the tip inside a one pixel height auto layout frame and always position it to the bottom. So now it's always going to be sticking at the edge. As you can see, you probably didn't know that this one existed, but if you did, let's move on to the next one. Now over onto the third one. This is a really simple one, but I realized a lot of designers didn't even realize this. So if you know how to utilize auto layout really well, congrats to you, but a lot of designers, they are utilizing auto layouts inside a frame for their artboard. So if you ever wanted to reorder these uh, components, you're going to be spending a lot of time trying to figure out how much spacing, what's the alignment and whatnot. But if you just select your entire frame and hit Shift A, this will automatically realign everything inside an auto layout component, which means that if you clicked on any section of your design, holding down Shift and the arrows up and down, you can move this up and down extremely quickly in your design. Now, if you click on your uh, main auto layout frame, hit Shift I, and if you're using a design system, uh, for example, my one, which is Shift Faster UI, you can go ahead and put down any component and it will automatically align itself and I can simply move it up and you've got an entirely new web page design. So always think about, can you auto layout your auto layouts? Now over onto the last Figma hack and this one you probably didn't think about. So let's say we have, let me zoom right in so you can see this clearly. Let's say we have a header, okay? And generally it's a very popular and very common UI pattern. We have a profile photo and the user's name. Here's the issue. Let's say we wanna keep our mockups extremely realistic. Let's say we change our Amber Heard's name to Michael Wong. We then have to rem remind ourselves to go ahead and change the M over here as well. But what if, what if we could do something like this? So let me go ahead and hide this component. Let's hide this. All right, so with that turned on, what if I can show you, if we utilize some smart text indentation on a component, we can actually do that automatically. So as you can see, we can change the name to Michael and the first letter will change. We can change it to Sarah and the first letter will also change in the circle as well. All right, so let me show you how to perform some of this black magic. Hit T on your keyboard, smash down an M, for Michael and just write out Michael onto your page, okay? The first thing you need to do is once you've got some text down, you wanna hit Command Option K, turn this text into a, compo a component. We're gonna rename this component to be username-2. For you, you can name it as username only because I've used username already for this component, so I'm using a dash two uh, over here. Now, the second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard once again. I'm gonna smash down uh, M, for Michael, and then I'm gonna hit Shift A to wrap it around an auto layout. Then I'm gonna go ahead and change the color. I'm using Ship Faster UI, my design system to pull through some color palettes. You can use whatever color you want. Then I'm gonna change the constraints in the top right corner to fixed for both horizontal and vertical axes. To make sure the width and height are exactly the same. Then make sure that the border radius is the same value as the width and the height. So 44 by 44 by 44, that creates a perfect circle. Then I'm gonna position all the content inside the middle. So the M sits right in the middle and I'm gonna just change the black to a white text, all right? So we've got the avatar and we've also got the actual uh, username as well. 
So the second thing we need to do now is copy this um, username, right? Make sure that you've got your avatar selected, double click, remove the M, make sure you've got your avatar selected, the auto layout, hit command V and paste the actual uh, username into the auto layout. So this will be utilizing an instance of your main component. So with this, let's rename our auto layout to avatar, okay? Now, here's the little trick that we need to do. The little trick is that we need to go ahead and select our um, instance of our username. Then we need to go ahead and just double click into it. Make sure we change the fill to white or change it how, or whatever color you want. We then need to increase the letter spacing to 200%, okay? 200% for the letter spacing. You can see that it's sort of coming along. Then we click onto your avatar and make sure you are positioning the content inside to the left, okay? As you can see, it's positioning it to the left, but we now need to increase, right? We need to increase the left padding to further push it to the center. So if you click on this uh, little icon over here, independent paddings on the left-hand side, just increment it up until it sits right in the center. Mine's at around 16 pixels, depending on what font you're using, it might be a little bit different, but you get the, you get the point, 16 pixels. So now you can see that this actually is using an instance of the main component username. Now with all that done, all you have to do now is move your components over to the side. You can go ahead and drop down an avatar by hitting shift I. Then you go shift I once again, put down your username. I'll grab username number two, put it together, select them both, hit shift A, put them into an auto layout. You can do 12 pixels in between, drop them down and you can see from here, you can now control all the names and it's going to work pretty well, as you can see. Now, obviously from here, you can get pretty creative if you want. You can obviously turn on component properties. You can allow yourself to change all the values um, from the pro a component property. You can take this forward however you want. So let me know in the comments below, was there at least one and if not all four Figma hacks you didn't know about and you've learned something new today. If you like this video, make sure to gently smash that like button and subscribe for the diehard fans and I will see you in another video very soon.